electromagnetic pulse EMP attack. P, yeah. For for anybody that doesn't know what that is, if you can sort of give us the abridged version of what that is and why a lot of people at a government level are really concerned about that. Well, first, uh, what we're referring to in terms of the government agencies being concerned is what we call critical infrastructure, uh, like, for instance, the electrical grid. Uh, a nuclear EMP, one that's set off by a nuclear weapon, is a very real threat. Uh, given what we know about the Iranian, North Korea nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs, countries have demonstrated advanced capabilities to create a functional nuclear warhead, and as well as build and test ballistic missiles that might be used to deliver this type of weapon. Now, what this means is that devices are capable of subjecting our transformers of the electrical grid and other critical infrastructure to localize the very destructive levels of high electromagnetic pulses. And these things can be built from readily available equipment. Uh, the damage would not be anywhere near as devastating as widespread as a nuclear EMP, but even if they were to build an EMP device alone, the ease of acquiring all the parts and assembling everything is not uh, that difficult to do. So what would fact, happen? Just to give you an idea. If, yeah, um, if one of it, these little local devices, one of these local size devices, so to speak. hits over our, what over us. What would the consequence be and how long would it last? Well, we actually know in April of 2013, there was an, an attack on electrical grid in San Jose, California. Basically, a couple of assailants who never were apprehended attacked a Pacific Gas and Electric Metcalf substation with automatic rifles. Um, they fired more than 100 shots altogether, which is not that much, and they knocked out 17 transformers. And even though electrical officials were able to avert a total blackout, the damage actually took 27 days to repair. What's going to happen, Troy? My car's going to die? My, I can't call anybody on my cell phone? What will happen if, if one hits near us? Well, while an EMP is a really good topic to discuss, what's more significant is the, the the effect it would have on the electric grid. So I'm going to focus on that for a second. Okay. The electric grid itself, I uh, understand that there's several different threats that can be made there. And as a matter of fact, the Department of Homeland Security actually considers the readiness and the defense of the electrical grid in the United States as just as important as our nuclear capabilities. Um, this is one of the things that we consider uh, that puts us into power plays with other countries, for goodness sake. So the idea is that um, the attacks on the electrical grid itself are just as important as what type of attack they would use. Um, but yes, if you're, if you're talking about an EMP hitting or an attack on the electrical grid, you're talking about fire and police unable to service you. You're talking about, and again, we're talking about even 17 days, you know, who has enough gas in the generators to last for 17 days? Mm -hmm. So the idea is that, you know, you're talking about multiple different services, hospitals, Food, transportation, communications, banking, um, all the all the, the infrastructure that we rely and depend upon failing. How can you uh, protect this, yourself individually? I heard you and a couple of the other dorks here talk. I mean, guys here talking about you could put your cell phone, you store it in a microwave, and that would protect it. We're all dorks until you need us, right? Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take I take that back because I want to go with you and your family. The interesting thing is, and, and, and believe it or not, your country has been uh, uh, designing and protecting itself against. The, the type of EMP. And again, this can also come from a nuclear device or from like a solar storm. So but, it could be man-made or not. But if I store uh, but, my cell phone in a microwave, when I get my cell phone out of the microwave, aren't the cell phone towers all down? Aren't they hit? There's not going to be cell service, right? Well, I'm going to tell you that, there, like I said, your country has been actually preparing for an EMP slash solar storm event for darn near five decades. Explain to so, everybody without uh, as specific as you feel necessary, what is a Faraday cage and how does it work? Sure, it's basically a way to uh, imagine in the ocean uh, as waves come over you, instead putting something inside of a bubble so that the waves go over and around instead of through. Uh, the microwave works by keeping microwaves inside the box. Well, the interesting thing is it also works by keeping microwaves from coming through the box from the outside. So it works both directions. So a Faraday uh, is so, like uh, a big metal trash can, too. A microwave oven is basically a little bitty Faraday cage, right? Indeed it is. Thank you. What should folks have, Troy? We're talking to Troy Jones, who's our head IT guy, and, and he studies this all the time. What should the average American have at home in terms of preparation? 
Well, I can tell you that you need to walk before you can run, so we'll start at the basics. Okay. You'll need at least a 72-hour kit. If you don't know how to make one, there's a great website called ready.gov, R-E-A-D-Y dot G-O-V, and it talks about 72-hour kits. Most uh, power outages and long-term events only last about three days. Now, of course, we've been talking about events that can last up into the, you know, 30 days, 60 days. Uh, as a matter of fact, one statistic said that if our electrical grid goes down for an entire year, nine out of 10 Americans will die. But uh, again, that's the, the worst case scenario here. Sure. What we're talking about is kind of like storms like today, where it's overcast and it's rainy and cloudy, and perhaps Wepco didn't trim the, the, the lines like they may have needed to in one particular area. You may be without power or cooling or refrigeration for three days so what you need to do is get a kit that has those types of things in it uh things like flashlights things like bandages things like uh, uh, an extra pair of clothes an extra pair of reading glasses your prescription medication and don't forget children pets and the elderly mm -hmm. and everybody almost always does would you advise folks to have like a backup supply of food and water obviously right most definitely. And again, it's not like I'm saying a doomsday scenario or something like that where it's the end of the world. But, you know, what if you get laid off from your job? Having between two to three months of, of food uh, in reservation is not a bad idea. Um, having a food storage area where you have dry goods, canned goods, and those types of things, where you rotate them out into your normal daily life. Uh, is actually a really good idea. And as a matter of fact, I don't know if you remember, Aaron, but that's probably the way your grandparents lived. Will we have any pre-warning of an EMP? There'll be no warning, right? It's just going to happen and... Bzz, and, and so sure, what was that noise again? Bzz, and wow. stuff's fried, Sounds right? Sounds like my house working the microwave. <laughs> well, and, and, our, and our, our worst case scenario is actually where it's not just an EMP attack. What we've actually seen in other countries already that we have on the books is that a cyber attack may also follow this understand that our cyber readiness and our grid security are of paramount importance as our nuclear program in terms of our defense of our country. So again, why have uh, you know nuclear capabilities but no way to launch them?